Hey guys, it's Chad again, and today I'm going to be talking about something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and that's the uh, custom ballast song that my father and I made. The one for me. I made two of them. I made one for Logan, and I made one for me. And this was because, you know, everyone starts out with a cheap, you know, Chinese crap, a CCC knife to begin with, you know. And I went through about, I think, seven or eight before I finally made this one. And, uh, you know, each one lasted maybe two months at the, at the most. Two weeks. Two weeks at the least, I guess. Um, <coughs> you know, my dad is a machinist, you know, kind of as a hobby. So he's got some, you know, a mill, a lathe, CNC stuff. And I've always been interested in working with my hands. So... You know, I thought one day, I see all these other guys making their own knives, I thought, you know, I might as well try my hand at my own. And, uh, so, you know, I pulled the blade out of my first knife, you know, first CCC, which was kind of a Jaguar thing, but I didn't know that at the time. I just went to a gun show and I bought one and broke a few months later. Uh, yeah. As you can probably tell, tip is blunted, you know, and the edge is gone. You know, the profile is also messed up because I took a belt sander to it trying to... I don't know what I was trying to do, actually. <laughs> but I rounded the spine so, oh, somewhat like the uh, 51, so it's nice and smooth on my knuckle. And, uh... I also took the edge down about a sixteenth of an inch, I'll bet, because, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little dent on the inside from when we wrote the G-code for the handles. My father compensated for the kicker right here, so every time it would, you know, close, the edge would come in contact with the inside of the handle. And now, as the handles are aluminum, it's kind of soft, but I, uh, you know, being the genius I am, thought that if I heat up the metal and let it cool slowly, it'll change the color. Unfortunately, that also anneals the steel. And so, you know, it's soft steel. I don't even bother trying to sharpen it anymore. It really is just, you know, pot metal, I guess. $16 knife, but so, uh, you know, I pulled the blade out and I wrote the G codes for the handles which, I don't know if you can tell, but, you know, it was designed to perfectly encapsulate the blade. See, because right here, again, I don't know if you can tell, but it matches the curve. And then right here, it's got the subtle slope going up. And, uh, you know, but at the same time, though, like, look. I think that started happening when we put the pins in, right? Yeah. We didn't, you know, radius the edges of the handles right, so at first, you know, they had to move at the same time or they wouldn't move at all because, yeah, another example, that's not good enough. If you can kind of tell, there's space between the two handles as they move, so they move dependent independently, and, uh, you know, this was the second one. The first one, we had the same G-code for both handles, you know, we made it with a simple, you know, go this way, down, this way, down, this way, down, and then cut the channels with a straight cut. But uh, this one we wrote the G-code so that, like I said, it encapsulates the blade perfectly. And, uh, yeah, we, we didn't know much of anything. And then the tang pin cups, I think they're called. We had did those differently just kind of by hand by writing um G1 X you know this Y that and so you know, they're different so we've got blade play but at the same time these are pretty thick aluminum handles so they have blade play but it doesn't develop or get any better or worse for pins I used pins because I hate screws you know even though actually all my battle songs now have screws 
Uh, just bad experiences with the CCCs, always having shitty hardware. I used a welding rod, and yeah, it goes all the way through here. What you see is the welding rod actually used to keep the blade in, inside the handles. Uh, I don't know what else there is to say. Oh, the uh, holes on the bottom originally were the same size as the holes used there and there, which were used just to clip it down to the vise so that the uh, handles don't move when we're machining them. But I saw the spider fly, and that's where I got the idea for these holes, and I also countersunk them so that you can do a latch drop since I didn't make it with a latch. Like I said, it's more for flipping. So I don't think I did say that, but it's more for flipping. <laughs> Show them the skull. Oh, yeah. I made that. That was all me. All of this was me. What I think is funny, though, is the handles are different colors. Only because, you know, of use. The aluminum is tarnished on this side, but not that side. A little bit on this side over here. But just because the buffing compound is still in the, in the skull, that's okay. I like it. Pretty happy with it. Uh, I thought for a little while that I might make a business out of making these and selling them, but I just don't have that kind of time. Uh, knives isn't easy. No, that's not. I applaud the people who do. Yeah, no part of this process <coughs> is easy, and I was only involved in it a little bit. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, if there's any questions, just comment, because I know I'll probably forget, like... 20% of this. The skull is on the bite handle because skull bad, no skull good. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, there's this little channel thing I filed down there because when I do the cherry picker, my finger always drags across that one part. And, you know, this knife is what I learned the cherry picker on. If you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, about search a cherry picker on YouTube. A guy called Sick of Theists did it, and, um, you know, that's kind of what really inspired me to get into flipping, I guess, is just the constant rollovers. Um, yeah, I cut the little channel in there, because when I was doing it, it would drag across and just slow it down and fuck it up. Anyway, Hydra 572, this is Chad, signing out.